In the age of pilgrimages, the age of Romanesque art, we saw Europe emerge from the turn of the millennium overjoyed that the world did not end. Towns were recovering, and energized by a papal plea, Western Europeans set out on a series of crusades. The crusades did not recapture the Holy Land for very long, but they did bring new goods and fresh ideas back with the crusaders. In our next era, the Gothic art of the High Middle Ages, Western European Christendom became even more prosperous and self-confident, even exuberant. A major church reform movement restored monastic discipline and strengthened the papacy. Towns multiplied, and some towns, such as Paris, became major cities. Learning moved beyond monasteries to new urban universities that sought to reconcile Christian revelation with Greek philosophy, logic, and even mathematics. A gentle, loving Virgin Mary ruled as Queen of Heaven and offered believers ready access to her Son. The final judgment still awaited, of course, but Christianity in this new era seemed kinder, kinder, gentler, and more confident of happy endings. So let's return to our Art of the Western World video for an introduction to Gothic cathedrals and their founding theorist, Abbot Suget. You've just seen this church in the video, but now I want you to look at the floor plan and compare it with the floor plan of our required Romanesque church, Santa Foy. So how is Abbot Suget's plan different? Both churches have radiating chapels, but at Saint Denis, the walls between the apse chapels, or apsidal chapels, the name more often used in Gothic art, have been removed, opening up the cathedral dramatically. Here's a comparative interior view let there be light. So how did they do it? How did they break up the thick stone walls and massive compound piers that had held up Romanesque cathedrals and puncture the sides with walls of glass? This required image of our required Gothic cathedral charter gives a big hint, which I've circled in parts to make an even bigger hint. Let's return to our bona fide expert who will tell us more about the history of this famous church. Both of these photos, as well as the photo on the previous slide, are required images. Back to the disembodied voice. I want to talk rather quickly about the technological innovations that made Gothic cathedrals possible. The first, which you saw on an earlier slide and on the video, is the flying buttress. This rather complicated slide should help you relate the flying buttresses of Chartres Cathedral to that complicated floor plan. The second innovation that made Gothic cathedrals possible was the pointed arch. These arches directed weight onto load-bearing columns at a sharper angle, thus allowing for much taller vaulted ceilings. So where did Gothic architects get that idea? Remember that a whole lot of Christians had just been off in the Holy Land on Crusades, where they had a chance to witness some of the marvels of Islamic architecture. And of course, the Arabs took the idea of pointed arches from the pre-Islamic Sassanid Persians. Our history is all about creative borrowing. Ribbed vaults were a third innovation that permitted Gothic cathedrals to expand vertically and accommodate walls of glass. Now this is a very busy diagram that includes more detail than you really need, but I find it intriguing that these Romanesque and Gothic vaults are actually the same height, but the pointed arch and the ribbing make the Gothic arch appear higher. Note the way the arches define the individual vaults, which are the organizing principle of a Gothic church, like the Romanesque bays. You have this entire slide up on your, in your work text. It gets a little complicated there. So this nave elevation from Chartres helps show how these architectural changes translated into interior changes, in particular, the addition of huge stained glass windows. An elevation is essentially a vertical slice of a building, in this case, a slice through the nave. This elevation of Chartres is not one of your required images, but you need to understand these terms, and I think the diagram will help. Here's a photo of this elevation juxtaposed with the diagram you just saw. 
And here, finally, is that scary floor plan of Chartres Cathedral, also required, required work without the helpful labels. Note that the vaults not only organize and define the space, but give it a sense of rhythm. The nave is long relative to the transept. These churches were designed to hold the entire congregation of a city, rather than to accommodate pilgrims coming in search of relics. So the radiating chapels open out more to the apse and become really part of the worship space. Once again, form relates closely to religious function. The west or royal portal, another required image, predated the Great Fire. So while it's considered early Gothic, this portal is in some ways a transitional work between Gothic and Romanesque. The sculptural program of the three doors is closely integrated. In other words, there is a very deliberate theme to these three doors. The tympani, the lintels, that's the rectangular space below the tympanum, uh, and the archivolts, those are those carved arches above the tympanum, basically the same as voussoirs, together emphasize major events in Christ's life, his mission, and his divine plan. Let's take a closer look at these images and hear from our genuine expert again. Okay, you've just seen all of these on the video, so a quick review. Here we see Christ's entrance into the world through the incarnation, that is, his human birth. Here we see Christ's departure with the ascension, completing his earthly ministry. And here in the central portal, we see again Christ's second coming to judge the world at the end of time. So this is another last judgment. And this theme of Christ in power judging the earth in turn links to the jam figures below who also stand for power, in this case both spiritual and temporal power. These are almost certainly Old Testament kings and queens, but they are also stand-ins of a sort for the French king in nearby Paris. <coughs> Excuse me, but it's the Old Testament figures and not French kings who give the name to the portals. By the way, these portals were used by royalty and church hierarchy. They couldn't be entered by commoners. So this gives you a chance to compare the central tympanum of the royal portal at Chartres with the tympanum from the Romanesque pilgrimage church of Saint Foy. In other words, are two required timpani. Note that they are both pilgrimage churches. Since pilgrims came to see Mary's tunic at Charter as well as the relics of St. Foy at the church that bears her name. In both churches, too, the tympanum shows Christ judging the world. But note that at Chartres, Christ is surrounded much less menacingly by the four evangelists represented by the animals associated with each. The Santa Foy Last Judgment, by contrast, is filled with images of hell and the devil. It's a whole lot scarier. This shift from an emphasis on hellfire and damnation to Christ as teacher, savior, and lord of the world reflects a change in worldview and theological emphasis as Europe entered the high Middle Ages and the Gothic period. We have one last image from Chartres Cathedral, the Notre Dame de Belverrière window shown here on the right, but I'm going to save that for my last lecture. Let's finish our exploration of this remarkable cathedral with a quick video tour of the interior. Well, I don't know if you're going to have time for this. I hope you do. If we are only going to study one Gothic cathedral, Chartres is a good choice. But we are skipping a lot of great churches. I'd like to share just one more. The College Board used to love to ask questions about the English Gothic style or perpendicular Gothic. Since I can't bear to have my students think that every Gothic church was built in France and looked like Chartres Cathedral, I've actually left a few questions about perpendicular Gothic on your test. To quote Wikipedia, sorry, the interior of Gloucester Cathedral conveys an impression of a cage of stone and glass. There is less tracery or ornate stonework, so the effect is more rectilinear. See how the nave has the look of a large rectangle? The curves of high French Gothic give way to much more severe straight lines. Rectilinear is actually, I think, a better term than perpendicular, but perpendicular Gothic is the term that art historians use more often. 
actually, most of you probably know Gloucester Cathedral. You just call it Hogwarts. I've put this clip of Gloucester Cathedral images, which include excerpts from the movies up on Moodle. If you have time, you might watch it now. And here, without Harry and friends, is the delicately and ornately decorated cloister of Gloucester Cathedral with its famous fan vaulting. In my final podcast, I will offer a quick review of how Christian images evolved over the millennium we cover in this all-too-brief unit, and I'll also talk about our remaining requirements.